have tremendous admiration for this man. He was somebody who conducted himself with great civility, always. Bill Perry is what's known as a mensch. My father had passed away, so when I got married, I asked Bill if he would stand in for my father at my wedding, and he did. We're that close. Well, I think Bill Perry's always been a man comfortable with ideas. He is by nature an inquisitive person. I'd say Bill is a poster child for defense intellectuals. Bill's one of those people who's whose legacy is not just in the programs that he sponsored, but also in the younger people that he uh, educated and uh, brought along to be senior public servants. He was able to be constructive, to call you in and tell you no about something, and have you leave still motivated and uh, willing to continue on the job and the task. A lot of us grew up with Dr. Perry in one way, shape, or form, so we're fortunate in that regard. I think the number of people who feel that he was their personal mentor is really astonishing. Bill also worked very well around the government, and if there's one thing we learned from 9-11, it's not just the Defense Department, it's the intelligence community, it's our Homeland Security. It takes an entire government working as one to deal with the complexity of today's problems. He knew how to work around uh, the government and not just in the Department of Defense. Well, I was in the State Department when I was working with Bill Perry when he was in the Pentagon. I had many opportunities to watch Bill Perry in his capacity as a brilliant diplomat. It really was uh, the genius of a Bill Perry that helped us harness the creativity of our scientific uh, ecosystem and our business community to help with national security. He saw how the, the advances in stealth technology, how the advances in uh, high performance computing and uh, global uh, span would change the nature of warfare. The fusion of platforms with information systems. GPS was the first element, but it was the beginning of a revolution. We married technology and policy to win the Cold War. One of the things that Bill has consistently paid attention to is the nuclear danger. Uh, right after um, uh, World War II ended, he was uh, deployed as such to, to uh, Japan. When he saw the devastation that a, a then atomic weapon could inflict, it shaped his worldview. Uh, he asked me to run for him the so-called Nunn-Lugar program, which brought all the nuclear weapons from all the far-flung parts of the Soviet empire back into Russia safely and securely and dismantled many of them. At the end of the first term of the Clinton administration, all of the nuclear weapons that had been in Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and Belarus had been eliminated. But there's more than that than that, that he, he did. He worked with NATO. There was the humanitarian tragedy in the Balkans, and NATO stepped in. That wouldn't have happened, and the Russians wouldn't have cooperated with that without the statesmanship of Bill Perry. He understood the importance of NATO. He understood the importance of alliances. It's important of bringing new countries in. That will go down as one of his probably uh, one of his most important legacies. Bill Perry brought a, a gravitas, a seriousness, which brought instant credibility to CNAS. I think he brought that, that bipartisanship uh, with him to CNAS, and I think one of the legacies that CNAS enjoys is great credibility on, on both sides of the aisle. I would say that it's the strength of his example that it is not confined to the Democrats, because I think that's a great thing. I think. We need bipartisanship in foreign policy, particularly given how uh, politicized uh, our, our political environment has become. And in, in this day and age, creating and protecting space for civil dialogue across party lines on national security is really invaluable.